So morning everyone, first session of the day and uh, Philip is going to be talking to us about all the exciting things that have happened and are happening in GGS uh, in the past and right now and uh, how they affect GNOME for us. Over to you. Thanks. Good morning everyone. <laughs> Thank you especially to people who made it to the after party last night and then made it here today. <laughs> What's your house? OK, you get a point then. <laughs> uh, my name's Philip Comento. Um, I'm a GNOME contributor. I work at Endless. Uh, last year, uh, a bit after Guadac, I became the maintainer of DJS. Um, that not everybody might know what it is, but it's the uh, JavaScript engine that we have in GNOME. Uh, it powers GNOME Shell. It powers many of the GNOME apps. Uh, it also powers the Endless developer platform. Uh, and I'm going to talk about um, some of the work that I did to uh, upgrade us in GNOME to a more modern version of JavaScript. Um, so this talk is for everyone who's interested in it, obviously. You uh, may benefit the most if you've written JavaScript in GNOME. So people who uh, work on the apps like uh, GNOME Maps and Polari, people who work on the shell and shell extensions. Uh, I'd also like to um, sort of pay a little bit of special attention to people who might have tried writing JavaScript in, uh, in GNOME before and then got frustrated because of our terrible JavaScript developer experience with uh, no documentation and, uh, um, and uh, an out-of-date JavaScript engine. So I'm going to talk about the developer experience a bit too. Um, <coughs> and uh, I'll give you some tips for uh, uh, upgrading your code to uh, uh, you know, stuff that's um, more common in, uh, in, in modern JavaScript. So um, JavaScript has a bit of a bad re reputation as a quirky language. Uh, I certainly disliked it for uh, quite a long time, which is maybe strange to hear from somebody who maintains a JavaScript engine. But uh, uh, like me, this cat is very skeptical of JavaScript. Um, <coughs> it's not hard to find lists of you know, people who are on the internet who are complaining about all the things that are, are terrible in JavaScript. I got, I got this list here. All I had to do was type into Google something like, why does JavaScript make no sense, and click on the first link. And this is from somebody who's on the JavaScript Standards Committee, yeah, this link here. So um, <coughs> it boils down to the language was written in, in, in two weeks back in the days of Netscape, and, and it shows. <laughs> This is why, uh, <laughs> you know, going back to the um, principles that uh, that Alan mentioned on the first day, because we all have to incorporate something from uh, from Alan's talk in our talks. We in in GNOME we have a principle of uh, uh, of good engineering, and in this case, you know, um, if if JavaScript hadn't had to live with the decisions that were made in those two weeks, you know, we've saved uh, billions in productivity when the web took off, but. We're working on it. Um, JavaScript has a standards committee. Uh, they're doing great work today uh, to dig the language out of that hole that it's been in for years. Uh, didn't help that not a lot happened for a long time. And uh, also, a really interesting thing to consider is at the beginning of the web, the average JavaScript program was one line. One of the uh, Mozilla developers blogged about this. But you would put one line of JavaScript in like an on-click handler in one of your HTML elements. and so the language served a very different need than it serves now. Um, now we have Node.js for writing servers, uh, you know, the server software in, in JavaScript. You know, we're writing GNOME applications, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff that they never thought about when they just wanted something to stuff in an on-click handler in a web page. Um, so we're on a good track. The, uh, the language is becoming a lot more like uh, you know, it's gaining a lot of the good stuff that other programming languages have. Um, <coughs> so in GNOME, um, our JavaScript engine uses SpiderMonkey, which is the engine from Firefox. So it's made by Mozilla. It's published or sort of published as a standalone library. Um, this, <laughs> I know nobody wants a graph on Sunday morning, but okay. this just shows uh, that <laughs> Until this year, we were lagging four years behind what the state of the art is in JavaScript. And four years is forever in JavaScript land. Uh, you know, 
entire software stacks get put up on NPM and then become obsolete all in the course of one weekend, uh, you know, in the, in the Node.js world. So, um, you know, we're frozen in 2013, uh, which made for some interesting workarounds, which uh, I hope to um, help you all get rid of out of your code. And <laughs> uh, so here's an overview of some of the uh, new stuff that, uh, that got put into GJS, um, thanks to upgrades of SpiderMonkey. Um, so I'll have like these little badges on, on most of the slides. Green is stuff that was in GNOME 324. Uh, you can already use it's in a stable version. Orange is stuff that's coming out in GNOME 326 uh, in September when it gets released. Um, and there's also this, the, uh, the, the technology of JavaScript engines itself is not stood still in four years. Um, there's, yeah. Thirty-eight. Yeah. Um, so there's like there's literally you know millions, perhaps even billions of research money being poured into making JavaScript faster in web browsers, and by uh, you know by sticking close to the state of the art, we take advantage of that as well. Um, not everything applies to us because you know we're not Gnome apps and Gnome shell aren't web browsers, but a, a lot of it does. You know, there's uh, we gained performance improvements in the garbage collector, in the JIT compiler. Um, but not going to talk about that, uh, especially because I don't have any numbers. So, <laughs> um, if I know we're having a uh, an unconference session on Gnome shell performance later, so I'd be interested to hear if anybody has any uh, ideas about uh, gathering numbers. Uh, that would be a great project for somebody to do uh, to quantify this. But I want to concentrate on the goodies that you can use in your code. That's what uh, most of this talk is going to be about. So like I said, there are a lot of uh, you know workarounds or weirdnesses that we have to do to deal with the JavaScript from the dark ages that we used to have. Um, and so the, the motto of, of this section is going to be, you don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, <coughs> there's, uh, yeah, going to be don't do this, do this now. <laughs> uh, one thing you can do, which we've actually had for a long time, this isn't even new, but almost none of the GNOME code that I've seen uses it, is uh, don't use lang.bind anymore. So um, you know, the, the, the this object in JavaScript behaves really weirdly if you're used to like how it behaves in other languages such as Python. And uh, you know, in GJS we had this lang.bind API, which uh, you know, sort of made things work, but it was easy to forget. But you don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, JavaScript now has arrow functions, and uh, you, know, you write an argument list, an arrow, and then the function body, uh, and it makes the this object behave like you'd expect uh, if you know any other languages. Uh, you just don't have to think about that anymore. You can't forget to do lang.bind and ha get weird errors of, uh, of this not uh, not being defined, um, and you know it's more readable as well. So I mean, the the problems with the, this object, um, you know, that's probably the thing that I find most confusing about JavaScript, and I, I would dare say scares off most of the newcomers, and even <laughs> experienced JavaScript programmers like this. <laughs> this tweet uh, went around a while ago. Um, <coughs> another thing that'll be new in 3.26, uh, so until um, like the standard update in 2015, JavaScript didn't have classes like other languages. So it had inheritance, but no classes. There was a, you know, you can, you could use a very cumbersome syntax to make classes and everybody had their own custom class API. Well, so did we, it was called lang.class. Um, but yeah, you can use native classes now, uh, and they, yeah, they look kind of like, uh, um, you might be familiar with from other languages. Uh, this, I think this syntax looks kind of like Java, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really no different from, uh, most of the other dynamic languages that you might be used to. Um, <coughs> it doesn't work yet for G object classes, but I'll talk about that shortly later in the talk. 
Um, another thing you could do, and this is already in 3.24, if you still use the old lang.class, um, there's a method syntax. It's, uh, it's really, you know, it's the, what you see on the right is nothing different from what you see on the left, but you don't have to type out function a million times when you're uh, writing a class. So it's just more readable um, and, and less typing, and I love it. <laughs> Another thing you can do if your code is littered with plus signs and strings that contain spaces and, and one piece of punctuation is um, that you can use these new backtick strings that we have in GJS. They uh, can go over multiple lines and they can interpolate variables. Um, and it's like just look at the left and the right. It's tons more readable. <laughs> and uh, you know, there are actually more cool tricks that you can do with post-processing of these strings, but that's something that I'm not going to get a genius in this talk because it'll take too long, but um, you can ask me about it later. Uh, another thing is that the standard library in JavaScript gained tons of operations. So like a really common idiom, which is really terrible, but everybody who's programmed JavaScript just sort of reads over it because it's so, uh, you know, it's the only way to do it. If you want to test if something is in an array, you have to take the index of it and compare it to minus one. No other language has something weird like that, but now JavaScript uh, can, you know, has uh, an array method for that too. There are other array methods, there are a bunch of string methods, and um, the, these two are my favorites. You can read about the other ones. Uh, there are also a couple of, uh, of things that um, are not backwards compatible on upgrades. So uh, mostly because of extra features that SpiderMonkey provided, but that eventually made it into the standard in a slightly different form. Uh, so those are gotchas when you're uh, upgrading your program. One of them is uh, this syntax. It used to be just fine to declare a variable twice, but it's not now. This will be a syntax error, so it'll fail fast. Uh, it's not going to blow up in the middle of your program. Um, <coughs> another gotcha is when you're writing modules that your code imports, uh, you have to declare your variables that you want to see exported with var, not uh, const and let, uh, because they will be invisible. Uh, this would break like pretty much every single file of JavaScript code that we have in GNOME. So uh, we managed to get it to work backwards compatibly, but since it is not part of JavaScript. It'll give you a warning if you do this. It'll work for the time being, but fix your code. Um, <coughs> this one is pretty minor, but it's probably the worst one, so I wanted to highlight it here, call it out. Uh, the form of the string replace function with the three arguments, uh, the third argument is now silently ignored because it was a Mozilla extension and they took it out. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to replace more than one thing in a string, use a regular expression literal instead of the third argument. Um, <coughs> if you want to read more about all this, uh, Mozilla has a really nice series of blog posts called uh, ES6 In Depth. Um, and yeah, as of GNOME 3.26, all of the stuff they describe there you can now use except for ES6 modules. Uh, so if you're writing JavaScript and you want to go more, uh, you want to know more. Um, yeah, go visit this link and, and, and read, the, read the series of posts. Another thing you can do uh, is that this slide deck has a huge appendix of all the stuff that uh, got added. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to talk about that here in this talk, but I'm going to put these slides up after the talk is over, uh, and you're welcome to use that as a reference and page through like the extra 30 slides that are after the end and uh, uh, get an overview of what's, uh, what's been added. Um, <coughs> there are a few more custom things for GNOME that I wanted to take a look at, uh, how you know, new stuff that we're doing. Uh, so another new feature in 3.24 was uh, promises. So if you're not familiar with promises, it's uh, an easy way of writing uh, you know, asynchronous code, so like I.O. operations. Uh, where you don't have to deal with callbacks. Um, so uh, GGS includes promises, but right now it doesn't include a bridge between like, the GIO operations with callbacks and promises. Um, so this sample code here, it uses a fictional function that's uh, called wrap promise. 
which uh, you know, I've, I've written it, I can share it with you, you can include it in your code so that you can use promises, but it's not part of GJS yet. Um, so you can take advantage of this, but it, there's, uh, yeah, you have to include a function. It's not gonna be part of the API. Um, what I would like to do is uh, have it automatically work, this bridging. Uh, there's a G-Object introspection bug that we need to solve. So if you wanna help out with that, then uh, let's talk about it during the unconference session or sometime during the break. Um, what else? I mentioned G-Object classes before and how they don't quite work with the new style classes. Um, it's because we had a whole bunch of stuff added to this lang.class uh, syntax that we had um, that you know, registers the type with, uh, with G-Object and adds signals and properties and things. Um, since you know, JavaScript classes are now part of JavaScript and not something that we bolted on, that does have one disadvantage is that we can't stick our own stuff in there as easily. Um, so this syntax that I've got up here, this is about what it will look like probably, but I'm still trying to work out some problems with that. Uh, I also want to make sure that it's forward compatible because in a future SpiderMonkey update, we will be getting decorators in the language. Uh, and that will be awesome because <laughs> uh, you can just write it like this and it'll look like it does in, uh, in PyGobject, for example. Um, so. Is this working? Yeah. yeah. Is the, how far are we from the class decorator in the language? That's kind of um, it's in, uh, so the proposal is in stage two, which means that it's ready for JavaScript engines to start implementing as a test. Um, so we may get it in March 2018, we may get it in March 2019. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, a lot of uh, JavaScript code uses uh, uh, preprocessors, which the JavaScript community calls transpilers. Um, so, if you wanted to use such a preprocessor in your project, you could take advantage of this feature already because uh, what I'm trying to do is add something that's forward compatible with this. Um, so, yeah, this is something, if you're interested in shaping how this turns out, I'd really like to talk to you during the unconference sessions as well. Um, <coughs> So another thing, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the developer tools. Uh, I promised that at the beginning. Uh, so the, the question that's been on everybody's mind for years is, why don't we have any documentation? Um, you know, so we have it now. Uh, <laughs> Python has the Python geobject introspection docs. Vala has Valadoc. Uh, we have it for JavaScript now. Um, so bookmark this link. Um, there's also a GitHub repository that, uh, um, yeah, this uses an existing web app that we're just running another instance of with our own documentation inside it. But uh, devdocs.io is actually really handy uh, even if you don't program JavaScript because it's got tons of documentation for all sorts of stuff and it's uh, really pleasant to use. Um, so thanks to everybody who helped get this hosted, uh, I see. Patrick's here, he helped write the Docker container. Thank you very much. <coughs> um, another part of the developer experience is writing unit tests. Uh, so um, this pattern is, uh, it, I think it originally came from Ruby, but it's really popular in the JavaScript world. This uh, you know, pattern was described before each and it, where you, uh, yeah, you describe the thing you wanna test and then you have uh, assertions in, uh, in, in separate functions. It's called uh, behavior-driven uh, development, but it's really natural to write, at least that's how I find it. Um, <coughs> so we have a, a utility for GJS that'll run tests like this, and if you write a C library with a, a G-Object introspection file, you could even use that to test your API, how it works in, in bound languages, and it's a lot more pleasant than writing uh, tests in, you know, uh, G test funk or, <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, <coughs> just a couple weeks ago, uh, Sam posted this on the on the GNOME JavaScript mailing list. Um, TypeScript is a 
sort of version of JavaScript with types. It's type safe and it compiles down to regular JavaScript. Um, it's pretty cool. It's uh, fairly tied into uh, Visual Studio Code at the moment, but we do have a flat pack for that, and I think it's even on FlatHub. I don't know <laughs> for sure. Okay. Um, <coughs> but yeah, if you are interested in JavaScript and you like types, then give this a try. Um, the uh, GitHub repository is up there, and uh, I'm sure he would welcome questions and suggestions on the uh, JavaScript mailing list. Um, and then these things have been maybe the, uh, the most long-awaited ones, debugging and profiling. So we don't have those yet. Uh, I have sort of good news in th that they're, uh, we're close to having them. So for a debugger, there's like three separate people who have uh, made a start on that and have patches that have been sitting in Bugzilla for five years that just need to be rebased and it all needs to be combined. Uh, so that it's what I want to work on next after the upgrade is done. Um, and then maybe finally we'll have a debugger and you can debug your shell extensions with that and, uh, and Polari and that stuff. Um, but unfortunately it wasn't ready in time for Godek. Um, Christian Hergert has a patch uh, that adds uh, profiling, so you can profile your JavaScript apps with sysprof and builder. Uh, that needs rebasing too, but that's, uh, yeah, now that the upgrade is done, that's, that's ready to go. So I hope to have more on this slide, but uh, um, yeah, ask me again in another month or so. Um, <coughs> that's about it. So thanks to the GNOME Foundation for travel sponsorship. Ship. Thanks for to Endless for paying for some of this work. Uh, and you may reuse this presentation under uh, some conditions. And tomorrow we'll have an unconference session. A lot of people want to ask me things about packaging uh, Spider Monkey. And so we'll talk about that, but we'll also talk about some of the stuff I've talked about here in more detail. And on Wednesday, there will be hacking. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Alberto. Uh, so the shell has the looking glass, and you have tab completion. When are we getting that in the GIS uh, shell on the terminal? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I didn't actually know there was tab completion in looking glass. Uh, so I guess it should be easy to steal that into the, uh, uh, into the command line shell. Cool. <laughs> Any other questions? In that case, thanks very much, Philip. Thank you, everyone.